Hi everyone, Jigo here from Mix Analog. A couple of days ago we added a new toy to our arsenal. It's banana colored, it's got meters that show no level nor gain reduction, and it's coming for your audio. Welcome, the Audio Destruction Unit. In a nutshell, it's a Red 47 inspired saturator circuit with modifications and an additional gain stage. Inputs and outputs are balanced with the coveted British Carnhill transformers, so expect a hint of that typical Neve-style low-mid solidity and presence. At first, the controls might seem a bit confusing, or maybe even intimidating. So, let's take a closer look at them. Starting from the left, there's the bypass switch, that, well, bypasses the whole unit, transformers included. So it practically becomes an expansive XLR cable. The dual mono switch changes the interface and the controls to dual mono operation. This can come in handy when working in mid-side mode or processing two mono sources at the same time. To activate the mid-side mode, click this checkbox over here. The drive and overdrive work in tandem as fine and broad controls of the overall gain and consequent distortion. My advice would be to first set the drive to a low setting around 3, then use the overdrive switch to select the ballpark distortion amount. From there on, adjust the drive setting again to fine-tune the level of distortion. The distortion type selector switch lets you select different gain stage wiring and additional filters in the main gain stage. TR stands for triode wiring, that sounds a bit warmer. PT stands for pentode wiring, that's more present and aggressive. And the PK1 through 4 stand for peak filters in the gain stage. To be more precise, those are bandpass filters that allow you to fine-tune the distortion to only a part of the spectrum, which is very useful in the parallel processing. The controls for that are located here, right next to the mid-side selector. The low-pass filter switch engages the low-pass filter after the distortion stage. This can be useful if you find the distortion to be too aggressive or fizzy. Next is the output level, which is an attenuator after the distortion stage. Use it to match the input level to enable equal loudness comparisons and to control the drive of the output transformer. The last knob is the bias control that decides on which portion of the tube's transfer curve the signal will get amplified and distorted. Changing the bias from fully counterclockwise to fully clockwise will gradually morph from asymmetric negative part of waveform clipping through symmetric saturation to asymmetric positive part of waveform soft clipping. In a less nerdy language, it has a strong effect on the distortion character. The high and low extremes usually sound a bit harsher and start to eat away at either low end or high frequencies, whereas the settings around noon have the most natural sounding character. decision when you say you will you won't have the time you do you don't have another drink it'll make you feel
So, this is the audio destruction unit on Mix Analog. Hope you found this tutorial helpful, but if you still have any questions, post them in the comments below or join either our Facebook community or Discord server. Until next time, bye bye!